begin the third lecture on Jeremiah. Today's lecture will be on Jeremiah chapter 1. The title of chapter 1 is Calling. First, Introduction, verses 1 through 3. Second, the call of Jeremiah and his calling, verses 4 through 10. Third, Jeremiah sees two visions, verses 11 through 16. Fourth, God tells Jeremiah not to be afraid, verses 17 through 19. Read verses 1 through 3. The words of Jeremiah, son of Hilkiah, one of the priests at Anathoth in the territory of Benjamin. The word of the Lord came to him in the thirteenth year of the reign of Josiah, son of Ammon, king of Judah. The prophet Jeremiah began to prophesy from the thirteenth year of the reign of King Josiah. Jeremiah prophesied through the reign of Josiah's son, King Jehoahaz, Jehoiakim, Jehoiakin, and Zedekiah. Judah fell in 586 B.C. during the reign of King Zedekiah. At that time, Jeremiah was in the land of Judah. Then the remaining people evacuated to Egypt after. At the time, Jeremiah followed the people of Judah into Egypt and continued to prophesy. Legend says that Jeremiah was martyred in Egypt by being stoned to death. Jeremiah prophesied for approximately 47 years. The prophets of Jeremiah's time also included Zephaniah, Habakkuk, Ezekiel, and Daniel. Here in verse 2, it says, In the thirteenth year of the reign of Josiah, son of Ammon, king of Judah. This is the historicity of revelation. God's revelation is indeed in ordinary history as well. God's word is historically true. Here in verse 2, it says the word of the Lord came to him. God's word is not personal thoughts of prophets. The revelation that Jeremiah received came from God from entirely outside. This is God's heavenly word. Therefore, prophets do not speak their own thoughts but deliver God's word. It is a prophet's calling to deliver God's word as it is. Then in verse 3, it says, Down to the fifth month of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, son of Josiah, king of Judah, when the people of Jerusalem went into exile. 2 Kings chapter 25, verse 8. There it says that many residents of Jerusalem were taken captive. Jeremiah's hometown, Anathoth, 
was located five kilometers east of Jerusalem. This was the land of the Benjamites. Jeremiah belonged to the tribe of Levi. Therefore, Jeremiah, the son of a prophet, received God's calling at a young age to be a prophet himself. Verses 4 through 5. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. It says that God knew Jeremiah before Jeremiah was formed in the womb. God set Jeremiah apart as his servant even before he was born. God does not choose people according to their character or actions. God chooses people unconditionally according to his will. Ephesians chapter 1 verses 4 and 5. God chose Jeremiah to be a prophet even before he created the universe. Therefore, when the time came, God entrusted Jeremiah with his calling. God intended to use Jeremiah as his prophet. Take a look at Galatians chapter 1, verses 1 and 15. There it says that God also chose the Apostle Paul. Today in the church, all pastors have been chosen by God. Here it says, I set you apart. To set apart in Hebrew is Kadash. Kadash. To set apart. Consecrate. These are its meanings. Therefore, because God set Jeremiah apart and chose him, he was to do God's work with a sense of duty. Jeremiah was set apart to live by God's will. Therefore, it teaches us that Jeremiah was to carry out his calling no matter what persecutions he would encounter. This means that he was to have a sense of duty as a prophet. Then in verse 5, it says, I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. God did not appoint Jeremiah a prophet of Judah only. Jeremiah was not to prophesy only in Judah, but in other foreign nations as well. Accounts of foreign nations are recorded in chapters 46 through 51. Verse 6 Ah, Sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am only a child. Here Jeremiah says, I do not know how to speak. I am only a child. This shows that Jeremiah was called to be a prophet at a young age. Jeremiah also meant here that he could not carry out his calling. Jeremiah knew that he was lacking.
We must always know that we are lacking. We must know that we are weak and cannot do anything. We must be humble. Then God will greatly use us. Isaiah chapter six verse five, Exodus chapter four verse ten. In this way, when we understand that we cannot do anything on our own, God will strengthen us with His power. God will empower us and will use us as His servants. Verse seven. But the Lord said to me. Do not say I am only a child. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. God told Jeremiah to do two things here. First, God told Jeremiah to go to everyone he sent him to. When God sends us somewhere, we must go. We must obey. Next, second, God told Jeremiah to say whatever God commanded him. God's servants must deliver God's word as it is. God's servants do not have to be well-spoken people. Moses said he was slow of speech and tongue. When God tells us to go, we must go. When God orders us to speak, we must speak. There is no need to think. Will people welcome us or oppose of us? There is no need to think. Will we succeed or fail? We must simply go where God sends us. When God tells us to speak, there will be life. When we speak God's word as it is. Even if we are lacking, we must say yes when God tells us go. When we deliver God's word, we must preach without adding to or subtracting from it. We must not speak words that are pleasing to the ears of God's people. We do not need to worry with humanly thoughts. There will be life when we preach God's word exactly as it is. When we plant seeds, we must plant them exactly how they are. There will be life when seeds are planted the way they are. Whether they are wide, long, round, or wrinkly, in the same way there will be life and power when we preach God's word exactly as it is. Verse eight. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you. Declares the Lord. God said that He would be with Jeremiah. When we preach God's word, there will be trials, persecutions, and difficulties. Even so, we must not be afraid, but be courageous. God, the Creator God, said. Do not be afraid. He is the Almighty God. God can guarantee protection, 
and protect his people with his power. Therefore, we must have faith and not be afraid, and we must obey God's commands. Then God will save us and will be with us. Verse nine. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, "Now I have." Put my words in your mouth. God reached out His hand and touched Jeremiah's mouth. God's hand is the hand of power. God put His hand on Jeremiah's mouth, which means that Jeremiah's lips would speak with power. God would speak for Jeremiah. This was a physical seal. Here it says, "I have put my words in your mouth." God put His words in Jeremiah's mouth. Jeremiah would preach God's word. Chapter fifteen, verse sixteen. God chose Jeremiah and made him an instrument who would deliver God's word. God's work is not done by man himself, but is fulfilled when man obeys God's commands. God's works. Take place when God's word is preached exactly as it is. Next, I have put my words in your mouth. Means that God would give Jeremiah a spiritual gift. God would give Jeremiah a gift of revelation. Elisha received Elijah's spirit through his cloak. In Matthew chapter ten, verses one and two, Jesus sent his disciples off with authority. When God sends us, He will not just send us out with nothing. But will send us out with authority. Verse ten. See today, I appoint you over nations and kingdoms, to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. God did not appoint Jeremiah. Over Judah alone, but over nations and kingdoms. God told Jeremiah not to prophesy only in Judah, but in other nations as well. Our God is not only God of Judah, but is God who reigns over all nations and kingdoms. Chapter thirty-two, verse twenty-seven. God gives us His word today. This is applicable to all parts of the world. Here it says to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow. Old grape vines. Must be uprooted and thrown out in order to plant better grapevines. In the same way, old buildings of falseness must be taken down in order to construct new buildings of the truth. Therefore, we must uproot. Anything that does not agree with God's word. 
We must uproot lies. We must uproot humanism. Then we must destroy and overthrow anything that goes against God's word. Next, it says to build and to plant. This means that the true church must be constructed according to God's word. This means that the true church must be constructed according to God's word. It means to build up the truth. It means to advance heaven's movement. In this way, we must build what needs to be built, and plant what needs to be planted. We must uproot anything that God did not plant. We must only build God's true word. We must build the spiritual temple and God's kingdom. Only the things that are in accordance with God's word will remain forever. God gave us this authority. The Lord gave us authority to uproot. And authority to build. Therefore, we must uproot anything that is not in accordance with God's word, and we must plant and build what is in accordance with God's word. Verses eleven through twelve. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you see, Jeremiah? I see the branch of an almond tree. I replied. The Lord said to me, "You have seen correctly, for I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled." Jeremiah saw two visions. He saw the branch of an almond tree and a boiling pot. The branches of almond trees become ripe earlier than other types of trees. Its flowers bloom early. The almond tree in Hebrew is shaked. Shaked, shaked, shaked means waking. The almond tree's flowers bloom in early January. The tree symbolizes awakeness. When God's time comes, His word will be fulfilled. In this way, God's word will be fulfilled. God's word will soon be accomplished. Thus, God's word will soon be fulfilled. God's word of judgment and salvation will be quickly fulfilled. God's word about Christ. Will be quickly fulfilled. For example, Jeremiah chapter thirty-three verses twenty-two through thirty-one, chapter thirty-three verse fifteen. The prophecy about Christ would be quickly fulfilled. God's work about new life. Would be quickly fulfilled. Jeremiah saw that God's work would be fulfilled. Also, the prophecy would be quickly fulfilled 
even during the Israelites' seventy-year captivity in Babylon, chapter twenty-five, verse eleven, verses thirteen through fourteen. The word of the Lord came to me again. What do you see? I see a boiling pot tilting away from the north. I answered. The Lord said to me, "From the north, disaster will be poured out on all who live in the land." Jeremiah's second vision was about a boiling pot. The boiling pot meant that disaster would come from the north. The boiling pot symbolizes God's judgment. It refers to disaster. It would come down from the north. Babylon was located to the east. However, Babylon in the east would invade from the north down to the south. It says that the boiling pot tilted away from the north. The north is the direction of disasters. God tilted the boiling pot away from the north. In this way, there would be many invasions and hardships. That would come from the north. Northern Israel was invaded by the Assyrians from the north, 721 B.C. Southern Judah was destroyed by Babylon's invasion from the north in 586 B.C. There will be great disasters and hardships in the last days. Ezekiel chapter thirty-eight verses two through six, chapter thirty-nine verses one and two. Therefore, we must always be prepared for such disasters. We can never know. When God will bring disaster and judgment on His people, whoever participates in sin will receive God's judgment. Verses fifteen through sixteen. I am about to summon all the peoples of the northern kingdoms, declares the Lord. Their kings will come and set their thrones in the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem. They will come against all her surrounding walls, and against all the towns of Judah. I will pronounce my judgments on my people. Because of their wickedness in forsaking me, in burning incense to other gods, and in worshiping what their hands have made, the people of Judah forsook God and worshipped man-made idols. They depended on foreign nations. They were disobedient to God's word. Therefore, God sent the Israelites to foreign nations to discipline them. God said that He would judge the cities of Judah and Jerusalem. As such, the wages of sin is death. Whoever serves idols will be destroyed. The people of Judah sinned 
and therefore they were destroyed through Babylon. Chapter forty thirty nine verses two through three. The sin of idol worship is a great sin. In the Old Testament times, the Israelites served many idols. What is the idol of today's time? It is the idol of greed. Greed is an idol. Colossians chapter three verse five. Anything that is for the self is an idol. Deuteronomy chapter nine verses twelve through sixteen. Anything that we chase after more than God is an idol. The people of Judah worshipped idols, and were disobedient to God's word, and hence they would be taken captive to foreign lands. Today, many believers fall to materialism, realism, and secularism. Verse seventeen. Get yourself ready. Stand up and say to them whatever I command you. Do not be terrified by them, or I will terrify you before them. Get yourself ready means to discipline oneself and govern oneself. Luke chapter twelve verse thirty five. Those who are entrusted with God's work must discipline himself. We must not fall to the devil's temptations and traps. First Peter chapter one verse thirteen. We must strike ourselves. So that we can submit to God. It also says, "Say to them whatever I command you." God commanded Jeremiah to tell the people of Judah of all their sins against God's word. It meant that Jeremiah was to tell the sinful people about judgment and destruction. It is difficult for prophets to tell people, "You will be destroyed." However, they must speak whether people listen or don't. Ezekiel chapter two verses six and seven. We must not hesitate, or add, or subtract. It also says, "Do not be terrified by them." This meant that Jeremiah was to rely on the Almighty God and go forward. Then God would hold him and protect him, even if the people were to ignore Jeremiah when he delivered the message of judgment. He was not to be afraid. Second Timothy chapter one verse seven. God is in control of man's life. Matthew chapter ten, verses twenty-eight and twenty-nine. Life and death are in the hands of God. Our lives and death are in the hands of God. What are people mostly afraid of? They are afraid of death, illnesses, and failure. 
They are also afraid of poverty and becoming weak. Deuteronomy chapter one verse twenty nine. However, God tells us to be strong in heart. Joshua chapter one verses six through nine. When we fail to believe in God's sovereignty, power, protection, and works, we will become afraid. Verses eighteen through nineteen. Today I have made you a fortified city, an iron pillar, and a bronze wall. To stand against the holy land, against the kings of Judah, its officials, its priests, and the people of the land, they will fight against you, but will not overcome you, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. God said that He would make Jeremiah strong and powerful before the kings of Judah, its officials, its priests, and the people of the land. An iron pillar and a bronze wall are both strong and sturdy. Ezekiel chapter three verse nine. Even if the strongest enemies were to invade, they would not be able to overcome Jeremiah. When we do God's work, we must not be afraid, even when we encounter hardships. And persecutions. God makes those who testify about God's word like iron pillars and bronze walls. We must trust in God's word and go forward. God gives us enough power to overcome everything. And still have power left over. Even if enemies try to break down prophets, they will not be able to overcome prophets. However, Jeremiah was imprisoned and encountered many hardships. Still. God protected Jeremiah till the end. Therefore, we must have strong and courageous faith to carry out God's works. We must not be afraid, even if our enemies are strong. We must not worry, even if we are weak. We must believe that God makes us like iron pillars and bronze walls, and we must courageously go forward. The truth will ultimately triumph, and God will have the final victory. God's word will be fulfilled. Therefore, we must obey God's word, just as He commanded. We must testify about God's word until the end, as Jeremiah did. With this, we will conclude the third lecture on Jeremiah. Thank you.